So many people, they experience oh, mind attacks. Mind attacks meaning what? Uh, it's totally going on in your head. Mind attacks. Nobody has ever seen a mind. <laughs> no, no, you know, it happens inside. People, you can feel it and see it. What is happening? Let's take a look again. And I don't know, maybe some of you who experience these things may find as I talk about them, you are losing focus and consciousness about it. This is also a mind attack. Okay? It is as though there is a force of operating within us that seems to oppose your expansion into consciousness, oppose your, your awakening into your true light, becoming happy and independent of this very poor relationship with your thinking. It is as though there is a force that is very active, and it seems never to get tired. But you get tired, yeah? or we will see, because everything hinges on identity and what we place as what we call ourselves and where we position ourselves. It is so so important, because we can name thousands of problems that can happen. But the victim is always the same. And the troublemaker is always the same. You can have thousands and thousands of problems. And sometimes people hear one problem resolved and then put another yes, in my case, but it's the same thing. You know, we can we you know the same knife I used to cut tomatoes, I cut my pumpkin and I cut my whatever vegetables. You know, I cut my onions, I cut different things. The same one knife. So it's the same, same method of looking. You see, one medicine for everything. And I'm going to show you again what it is. So we are very, very aware of the sense of being, you know, just really your mind is blowing a storm, saying all kinds of things, you see. And uh, it is really about ego. There's a there's a there's a joke. It says, you know, the one good thing about an egotist is that he doesn't talk about other people. <laughs> okay, <laughs> basically, it's always about himself or herself. Okay, so something, the this play that happens, you know, yes, and okay, but well, they don't like you. They don't like you. Oh yes, you know, they're gonna see you that you, you know, that you're you're weak or something, or you know, you're not ready, you're not good enough, and you know, remember last time you failed. What makes you think you're going to succeed again? Who is this voice? Who who is it? That is who is who lives in this house with you that speaks like this? You know, you know, it's, you're too late. You're too late. You left it too late. <laughs> and so in satsang we are speaking about something else and something is crushed ah, ah, feeling the attacks from the mind and it is feeling real it's painful sometimes people become really physically sick and uh, blah, everything like this what really is happening you see and to whom So you say that okay, the mind is coming, and it's just always like uh, you know, it's manifesting like fear, and that I don't want anybody to see me. I don't want them to see me like this. So whoever it is, it's already functioning in your head that they, they look, they notice you. They look, they notice. Oh my God, they notice you. So you get up and you walk off to some place. You need to be alone. Don't want anybody. So what is causing all of this? You can sit down, you can look at it, you can say, okay, the feeling is that there is something inside that is whispering or communicating to, to, to my sense of self and saying that, you know, you know, like, you're not gonna get it, it's not for you. This is not your path, 
you are wasting time here and all this thing. And yet you know that something brought you here. At a deeper place, you know that it is good to be here. On a superficial place, you feel like something wants to drive you out. So what do you do about it? Well, first of all, stop fighting against it, in the immediate sense. Stop fighting and try and create distraction. No, no. Let it play. And now you don't fight for a moment. You just observe. Just leave it for a minute. Let him throw his best punch and whatever like this. But you just you just be aware of it. You start to be aware of it. Hmm? And this feeling of fear and uh, what is the voice actually saying? What is it actually saying? Right? So it may be saying, well, you know, you know, you're wasting your time, you know, what are you doing with these people? And they're all strange anyway. Why why would you, you know? And uh, no, no, I don't want to listen, I don't want to listen. Okay, so that's the message in the in the fear is that uh, these people they don't want you here or they're isolating you, they're picking on you, whatever it is, no? So you write it down. Okay, that's that seems to be what the fear is about. And then the next point is on whom is it impacting? It will seem already that you don't need to ask this question because you already put yourself as the victim of it. Or who is being attacked by it? Well, it's obvious it's me. But then you say, okay, it's me. Let's look further into this me feeling. Exactly what is it? Is it the body? Is the body saying, you know, I am being attacked by my mind? No, the body doesn't have that ability to distinguish and to have enemies or friends. It is not the sentient functioning inside. The body is just the body. It registers the pain. It takes the uh, the pain, uh, but the something inside is the one that seems to be suffering. It's not merely the body. Who? Let's see if we can identify where the pain is landing. Who is the victim of the pain? Who is who is being affected? And if you start with this question, I'd say just sit quietly and and write this question down because from the mind is come, gonna come tremendous resistance that you don't catch even the question to even ask it. Sometimes you may notice that. Sorry, what was the question again? Look at your paper. Okay, look at the paper. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So I have to. Uh, and you find it very difficult to focus your, your your attention. What is this? This is my attack. You see, on whom is it attacking again? Who is the one who is attacked again? And you must try and see not just the feeling, not just the assumption. It's me. That's what we all do. But see if it can be directly identified. The me sufferer. You know? In the beginning, it might sound a bit. What's a bit unusual question, but. Hold the question and stay with it. Try to understand. Use the question to see if you can identify the sufferer. Don't just assume the sufferer. Just begin to look. And if you find that you start to think about bananas and, <laughs> and you know shopping and stuff, these are the distractions that are coming up. You see, just keep looking back at your paper again. So yeah, I'm going to try and find. And stay with it. Stay. You start to find maybe you feel tired and lazy, and you start to dream. No, just stay with it. Keep coming back, and stay with it. And at some point, you may find a reaction like this coming. Something like, <gasps> something feels more, much more relaxed. What is that? These are one of the ways in which the energy that is compacted into the identity is really being released. It comes out when one way it comes out. Then you see that there isn't yeah, it's quite contagious also. <laughs> then you see also that wait a second. Something already feels much more. The environment inside feels much less, you know, claustrophobic and swollen. Something feels like it's, you have just exhaled out some of that that stale energy. But don't give up the question. 
Sometimes we feel, ah, oh, thank you. Oh, I feel so much better. Thank you. I think I'm going to have a cup of tea. No. Stay with the question. Yeah. Who exactly is the sufferer? Let's try to identify the sufferer. Use the, the suffering feelings, hmm? the kind of anxiety feelings, to see who is the one suffering them. Just keep this question nice and simple and look. And you may find keep coming. Just keep looking. And you may find that happens quite a bit. It's one of the ways in which delusions leave. The energy of them uh, leaves. And with them the delusion is going also. Whatever it is. Okay? It is just one of many ways in which, sometimes, uh, if it's caught very powerfully or in the presence of uh, someone with a tremendous power in this area, you may find come out sneezing or coughing. <laughs> That's also can okay, come a little bit like that. But we're not working for that. Don't be looking for that. Don't be saying when the yawning is not coming. No, no, don't, don't do this. You just try to understand to fix the attention. On the one who, if there's a one who suffers, because don't let your your beingness just assume there's a sufferer. Look for it, and by looking for it, just your interned attention is already burning this delusion out from your system, and you do that. Hmm? So that is the power of the inquiry functioning on your behalf to somehow clean up all this kind of mess that seems to be there. The invitation takes you very nicely, without any real effort, uh, straight to the, into the heart of being, the sense of beingness. It is not a place of shapes, of names and forms and time. It is like a timeless uh, realm. Cannot be described, but also cannot be mistaken. I found myself calling it a formless noun, meaning that it is not a thing, it is kind of a thing, but it is not got a form. It is not something passing, it is not a movement, so it is not a verb. It's like a, a thingless thing. So in that somehow isness is being. The person does not have a strong role. Nevertheless, it will come back into play. And it can come back into play, but it's much uh, less consequential in its actions. It's much more superficial. The sense of personhood is much lighter, more superficial. It's not that you know we are big. Why? Because the identity, the strong identity, has been neutralized. And when the identity is neutralized, everything goes well in the world. Come to the mic and say, is it easier? How about? Uh, like when images just come and you have a strong clinging. Clinging? Yeah, clinging. Like that, that is watched. Strong clinging. You are a Klingon. <laughs> <laughs> so that is watched. What makes it continue is if you don't doubt it, if you don't check it out. Then he, you identify with the, the one clinging. He said, I can't, it's just so hard to let go. I said, but can you see, is it the what isness is suffering this thing? You have to keep coming back to base. Guruji, you, it yeah. is watch, it is watch, yeah. but it is very intense. Like sometimes you are here and everything is peaceful, and then 
thoughts just come, and then you get involved into yeah, the okay, thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me talk you through it again. You, the thoughts come up. They come up. Okay. I didn't give those thoughts to you. No. They are already inside. The satsang is only exposing them, or exposing a potential that has still been living in you. Okay. So then somehow it's the, the, the thing comes up, and then immediately identification goes. If identification does not go there, that just gets dissipated into, just gets oblivious, oblivious you to it. It's gone. No, I'm with you. So then something goes, it comes, it feels very, very strong, and because and then identification is there. And it feels, it's, not, it's not letting go. Okay? The monkey's on the back. It's not letting, <laughs> it's not letting go. Is this perceivable or not? Yes. So right there, you begin to stay, look and say, but that, that is perceived. Then something goes, but I'm not getting off. <laughs> Suppose you meet this type of thought, you know? Sometimes you meet someone. Suppose someone, you open the door and they walk into your room. Suppose someone knock at your door, and you open the door and say hello and just walk straight in. <laughs> Huh? Go to the kitchen, start to make a breakfast. Okay? I say, hey, 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 what's going on here? I don't even know you. Get out of my house. No. <laughs> now, normally, you would think a reasonable person would go, oh, sorry, mate, I was just really hungry. I'm going. What if the person say, I'm not going, and put his, <laughs> put his foot up on your, on your table, lie down, and say, listen, go and fix me a cup of tea. And you say, you've got to be crazy. You can't come into my house. I get out of my house. I'm not going. What do you mean you're not going? You heard. <laughs> what do you do? What if a thought come and you say, get out. Get out. And he looks at you and go, <laughs> I am not going anywhere. Okay. What will you do? What will you do? Do you say, okay, I leave then. <laughs> I'll go and rent another apartment. No, you won't. You, what are you going to do? You have to find out, this cannot, this cannot be true. This cannot work. This cannot work. You know? I am the landlord of this house. This is an imposter, okay? And there's no police where you live. <laughs> you have to get him. How are you going to get him out? How are you going to get this thought out? No, it cannot be. He, he's in your bed? <laughs> <laughs> he's got the remote control. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look. <laughs> I don't know where we're going with this. <laughs> no, okay, let's, let's take a look. Okay. So some, I'm only pushing it to see as far as it can go. There's a thought there, and it won't shift. It won't shift, and something is feeling like, help, uh, help. I, I, I've seen people like this, many, in that state, gripped by their own mind. Okay. So where you go with this now? So you say, yes, I look from the what is. Okay. But it's not moving. Because you're not the what is. You're just someone thinking, I'm the what is. Okay? And the thought knows you're not yet the what is. <laughs> you're going, listen, I am the what is. <laughs> and the thought goes, all right. <laughs> what are you going to do? But what are you going to do? So what I'm pointing out is this. Either you are in a place where you have identified, because what tends to happen in situations like this is that you are a strongly, the strong force of identification is coming there in this play. And this identification is producing all this acidity. And something, and the one who is going, I don't know what to do, is also part of the play. And something is able to look at this yes. acid, acidness. 
And as you look, you don't identify. It feels like something is going. It's you know, what can I do? But this, what can I do? Voice is also heard. And you keep looking, and just don't try and stop the feeling. Please listen. Don't try and stop the feeling. It only it grows with with resistance. So let it be there. But you just keep looking. Who is suffering this? And a voice will say, "What are you talking about? Who is this? Is me? Is it me? Who? Keep looking. It's a voice in the wilderness, strongly believed in, and that's where it's taking its juice, its nutrient, its nourishment is coming from your belief. Who is the believer in it? Also, this is your question. You are unrelenting in your looking. Don't give up, because your mind is not going to give up. It's not going to say, "Look, you know what? I've troubled you enough. I'm just going to go to someone else." You have to stop. And what does it mean you stop? It means that you stop feeding this. You see it. You see that this is, this is a person and, and this idea, and it's just an idea. You keep looking. You stay with him. Stay with him. Don't mind the feeling. He's throwing eggs at you. He's throwing everything at you. And you don't mind if you just stay, stay, stay. And just keep just looking. Don't judge. Don't identify. Just keep looking and just keep looking. Who are you? Who is, who, who is it who is suffering? And at one point, poof, he's gone. The grip cannot, it cannot sustain the grip. And the one who is holding on to also, both of them go. Then the tendency is to feel, thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you. This one also, you are not also. It is, it, is, it is there, relief is felt. But don't identify so strong. Of course, relief, the sense of gratitude, that can be felt. But don't identify so strongly. The space behind and in which the relief also is experienced, be there. That is how you are going to face these mind attacks. They have to come. They have to come. And you have to use them. Because if they don't manifest, you don't know they are there. You follow? It's only when you identify as a person, you are behaving like a victim. But when you identify as the what is, as the investigator, as the viewer, as the witness of them, you see, they can't sustain their power. In the light of such looking, because the victim is going to run, but the observer is going to stay, and the illusion or the delusion cannot survive. You see, against such uh, such kind of observation, it cannot do it. You're going to use it. You're going to thank God for them. Thank you for this test, because I needed this test to grow my spiritual muscle to overcome this type of thing. Don't just search for rescue. Please help me. Please stop this. Please stop this. If you're going to say, please stop this and stop the one who is suffering this, I saw then. Have I gone too far with this? This is, this is the way you have to look. You have to use your inquiry. You cannot just think it. You cannot just keep going, who am I? 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 Ooh, am I? Ooh. You know, some people are doing this also. That you can frighten your mind with being brave. Just look. When it is subsided for now, this activity has fulfilled its purpose, it's done its job. And you have done yours. You have used it to look, to clarify, to verify what is your true position. Are you the one who is being beaten? We have been trained to identify with this person who is victimized and who is, you know, so much injustice has been done against me, man, and building up some kind of some kind of case. And the ego, it loves, it loves evidence. April the sixth, eight forty-two.
two. <laughs> and before that, it was so. They loves this kind of stuff because by that it can live in the notion of being a person, and it wants to do that. This behavior somehow. When you see from the clarity of the isness, all of this becomes laughable. It's not there. It's got no teeth. This serpent has no teeth. It has no venom. You can give him to the children to play with. But when you are identified with this stuff, he is like the original serpent. I wonder if you are hearing these things. Because every tool is being put in you to destroy these delusions, to wake up, not just even destroy them. You only have to wake up. When you wake up, they are no more. If you try and destroy them, you give them a sense of life and a sense of, of reality. Do you see this or not? Yes. So, then that's it. Guruji, but uh, in my case, it's not like more like uh, an intruder, but it's like enticer, like it's seducing you. It's a very beautiful image. Or Same something. victim. The one is being seduced, or the one who is being enticed. Same. What's the difference? One in pink, one in orange. Well, what is it? It's the same, same identity is behind them. It's still the me factor. It's the me factor. Yeah, yeah. But this one, I, but in my case, I feel as though you have a case. You don't have any case. It is, it, it is uh, trying to six of one and half a dozen of the other one. Okay? There's not really any difference. Just one wear pink, one wear blue. But it's the same characteristics, the same identity that's being enticed. So you just go to the thoughts because like something images and then you just involve with it. Because like No, that's what you've been doing. Yes, I'm Yes, okay, okay. But like, that's, that's not what I'm telling you to do. No, 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 no. Ah, church, okay. I, this has been watched, like some thoughts come up about the future and then it's so enticing, you just like go with it. Go with it. There's nothing wrong with that. If I want to, if you know who you are, and then you want to play with the idea, use your imagination, playful a bit, you know, I think in the future I like to do this kind of stuff. You don't take it so seriously. You can have a bit of fun with it, why not? It's when you believe in it, you believe you are really this guy who has a future in the way that your mind is projecting. And then you're up the tree. But if you are simply just playing a little bit and I think I like to do this, and you enjoy, you know, enjoy imagination. Of, of course, it's one of the one of the abilities of consciousness is to imagine, to create, to play. It's meant to. It wants to play, but we take in our, you know, it's like, it's like you took the role too seriously. Yes. You you you're playing King Henry the Eighth, and you're on stage, and you're oh, and they say, oh, he's the greatest King Henry the Eighth, oh. and then you go home dressed. That's King Henry the Eighth, and saying to your wife, "Where's my dinner?" And he says, "Well, I didn't make any." Off with your head! You know? I mean, you are still role playing when it's time. It's finished. The game is finished. It's okay. It's a play, but you have taken it too seriously. You know, and then you can say, "Wait, but guy, does he know it's a play?" So the the one who's awake is saying, "Do you recognize that it's a play?" You go, what play? The next time you say that, off with your head as well. <laughs> this is what is happening. In fact. Can I say something to that? Because it really relates to me also. I, um, I was also just having movies going on, how I speak to you, or something that's just running, and then something else that was not the isness, of course, was very bothered by that. And that made it stick, and then it kept coming, like just silly stuff. Also, could be, could be, could be. Don't get involved in any scenario, particularly. Yeah. Let, let me explain but. this thing before, because we, we are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get involved. It, uh, we're going to have one long satsang today, right until the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get involved in any scenario, okay? Um, just keep staying in the place of the what is. You can look from there. It's a big window. You can look at the whole world from there. Okay, but keep confirming your place. That you know, not confirm in some rigid mental way, but 
but from, from the, in the beauty of the discovery of the what is look, and then you can see your persona acting and all of his acting and stuff. But something does not take it in that deeply anymore. And to that extent, you will enjoy your freedom. Okay? Now, if I say, don't get involved in any scenario, you may say, what do I mean? Like, you mean, if my house is on fire, I shouldn't put water to it? No, you will do whatever it is that's needed to be done in that moment. And such is life. It's like somebody coming to you and saying, Suppose you're attacked by three people, what would you do? Well, I'll do that with one of them, and then I'll do that with the other one, and I'll do that with this one. That's your fantasy, because when the time comes, maybe you'll run and leave your grandmother in the world. We don't know what you will do. So you don't have to plan anything that is okay, you know, I'm going to do anything about the future, and just forget it. Trust that you have been called by grace. As life presents itself to you, you something will respond in the appropriate way. You don't only have to believe this, you can test it out, and you'll see. You can then come and say, you know, Muji, actually, that doesn't work like that, because the time came, and I fainted, actually, or whatever it is. I said, well, that was what was meant to happen. You, you fainted. I mean, when, when you face, or suppose you're attacked by three guys and you faint, they're not going to beat you up. They're going to say, oh my God, let's get out of here. So you don't know what's going to happen. I saw one video, actually. Some guys were attacking one guy. They come to beat him up. Okay, They were coming to beat the guy up. And you know what he did? He pulled his trousers down. And they took off, and they just said, "No, no, no, no! I don't. They don't want anybody to see them harassing someone with no trousers. I mean, that's not cool, you know." So they took off. Now, where did that idea come from to take your pants down? From the what is? I tell you. Just trust. It, it, it. <laughs> but the appropriate thing will happen in the right time. I mean, it doesn't work if a dog is attacking you. Take your hand. <laughs> but anyway, my point. My point is simply this. That we, we, we don't trust in the life because mostly we've been conditioned to act prematurely and to force things and to imagine too much, and so you're out of sync with life as it really is. That's what happens. Too much personhood, too much projections. And so we lose our spontaneity and our intuitive uh, functioning and perception. So the, all I'm saying is just to, to just. Forget about all these techniques of living. <laughs> Discover yourself as life. It is enough. We are good? Yes. yes. Can we go to lunch? Yes.